Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my tutorial series on quantum statistics, and we're going to move on to calculating the average values of energy. This is tutorial number 17, and the previous video to this is the partition function. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the average values using both the partition function and the Boltzmann factor. So there is something which I'm after forgetting, or I'd like to add, I suppose, is that we said earlier on that the, the partition function is the sum of the Boltzmann factors. Now, let's say that we're in the ground state, okay, and let's say for argument's sake the ground state is energy equal to zero, so E sub zero is equal to zero, well then Z is equal to one. Alright, now as the energy gets increased, Z goes down, as E goes up, Z goes down. Alright, so the the uh, amount by which Z goes down depending, depends on how much, of course, the energy is. So if you think about it, a, a state with large energy will have a small Z. But of course, states with large energy are, are less probable than states with, small, with low, low energy. So that's why we say that Z essentially counts the number of states which are available or likely to be occupied by the particle. So I'm going to move on from that. Alright, so we know that the probability of an event occurring can be written as follows. So it's P sub P of S is equal to 1 over the Boltzmann factor e to the minus E sub S over KT. And I'm not going to bother writing down the Boltzmann factor again. Now, if we think about averaging, how do you average something? How do you get the average value of something? Well, generally what you'll do is, let's say, let's say we take the we, the, the bar on top is, is average, okay? So let's say we have, we have, let's say, at 0 EV, we have 2 particles at 0 EV, we have 2 particles at 4 EV, and we have, say, 1 particle at 7 EV, right? Now, that's the total energy. We, there, that's the total energy. But how we get the average energy is we then divide by the number of particles, which in this case is 5, giving us our... Uh, giving us our average energy. But another way of looking at this is just simply by writing it differently. So you might say it's two-fifths by, we'll say, E1 plus two-fifths by E2 plus one-fifth times E3. So you might say that each of these is the probability of that particular energy occurring. So what we do is we weight the energy by its probability and sum them up. Okay? But we already know the probability of an event occurring or the energy occurring. We have this particular function here. So we need to use that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and write that in a different in a different manner. So we can now say that the average energy E bar is equal to the sum over S of the energy multiplied by the probability. I'm going to call it the P of S. Okay, which is the sum over S of the energy multiplied by the total number like that. Okay, so where this is the number of particles in this particular state and this is the total number of particles. So uh, just to make life easier, in fact, I'm going to use a notation which I'm going to use the notation which I've been using up to now. This would be n sub s, if that makes any sense. But n sub s over n is, like I said, the probability. We know what that is, so we can just plug it in. So we're going to get the following. We're going to get that e is equal to e bar, excuse me, is equal to one over z times the sum over s of the energy of state s times e to the minus e sub s over kt. That's the average energy of all the particles. Uh, well, sorry, excuse me, that's the average energy of one particle. Sorry, that's very important. That's one particle. So how do we get the, the average energy of all the particles? Well, that's very straightforward. I'm going to use the letter, the placeholder U, for the total energy of the system. 
So U bar is going to be equal to E bar times the total number of particles. Alright? Now, what I'm going to tell you is this, that fluctuations in U bar are very small. So I'm going to say that U bar is approximately U. And that's, that's, we're going to, that's how we're going to get the total energy in the system. So from now on, to calculate the total energy in the system, you multiply the average energy of each particle by the number of particles. And we're going to say, because of some only very small changes in this, this is the actual total energy. So, that's really all I've got to say about that. Now, I'm not going to prove the following, um, the following relation, but this is a very, very important and useful relation. That E bar is equal to minus 1 over Z del Z del beta, where beta is equal to 1 over kT. So the point I'm trying to make here is this. I'm just going to leave this there. I'm not going to prove it for you. That if you somehow know the partition function of your system, if you differentiate your partition function with respect to beta and multiply it by 1 over z, then you have the average energy of your system. If you then multiply, or the average energy of, of, of a single particle. If you then multiply that by the total number of particles, you have the total energy of your system, give or take. Alright, so thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.